guys, how are you? Um, welcome this morning. This is a special online edition. Uh, we are live streaming from our home. Uh, I don't know why we didn't think of this sooner. We could have the whole church family in our home and I don't even have to clean before you come. Uh, it's a win-win for everybody, really. Um, if you're watching with us this morning, please do us a favor and uh, go online, uh, fill out our communication card, our connection card, so we know um, what's going on with you. We have to be really creative uh, with this quarantine right now to uh, make sure we're taking care of our church family. So please do that. Um, it's a great way to um, keep us updated on what's going on in your life um, and keep you updated as to what's going on at New Hope. And you can share any prayer requests or praises with us. Also, on the Facebook live stream, if you would, <clears throat> just let us know you're here with us so that we can uh, greet you, um, we can uh, just welcome you, we want to know who all's with us. Um, again, we're trying to be really creative these days. Uh, a reminder, um, tithing and our offerings are an important way we serve Christ, uh, a way we worship Him and the church through our giving. Giving also supports our missions and ministries. We have multiple ways to give. Uh, you can use uh, the mail system, mail it to the church address at 5422 Van Road in Newburgh. Uh, there is a locked drop box um, at the entrance to the church. Um, you are welcome to drop it in that. Um, also online, we have a uh, ser online service um, located on our webpage, number 4 all.com and you can give online um, just a reminder there will not be fusion tonight uh, there will be no meeting at the church building um, just please be aware of that um, and some really great news I actually had to contact Lisa Zizzo this morning just to make sure I was reading this correctly uh, if you remember, about nine weeks ago, we set forth a challenge for our church to donate 2,000 pounds of non-perishable food items and cleaning supplies for Hope Central. This week, 728 pounds were donated, and so in just nine weeks, our total is 2,217 pounds. That's right, we well surpassed our goal. Um, we want to continue giving and just bless the socks off Hope Central. Um, I, shoot, I think we can probably hit 3,000, 4,000, who knows. Um, but that's awesome giving. Um, what a great local ministry that we have participated with and we know that many, many families are going to be blessed. Um, we've had to change up, uh, obviously, the, the way we're collecting the shoe boxes for Operation Christmas Child. Um, they were due today. However, if you can please drop them off and leave them in the brown box that you would uh, drop your Hope Central donations to. If you could put those shoe boxes in that box, um, Marla will be able to pick those up. They have to be in that box no later than Tuesday at 4 o'clock. If that creates a hardship for you, please let Marla know, and she can arrange getting those from you. Um, again, just a reminder, um, Pastor Andy has prayer sessions using Zoom on Wednesdays at 12.30 um, or Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. Great way for uh, those who maybe work and can't make the, the noon lunch period um, Zoom meeting. Um, so Thursday is another option for you. Um, the Zoom login information can be found on the New Hope News email, our website, and the Facebook page. Okay. Um, there's also a new online-only small group starting. We'll be meeting on Sundays at 6 p.m., so please contact Pastor Andy if you're interested. On Sunday, December 6th, <clears throat> we will be celebrating 10 years in our church building. After worship that day, we will be providing a boxed lunch and cake for those that wish to stay and join us for a fun, safe time of celebrating and looking back at the humble beginnings of our church building. We also will be live streaming a presentation of early pictures and stories for everyone to enjoy. 
please stop by the table and um, in the back of the sanctuary when we're meeting in person or contact Candy Harper um, to sign up for your choice of sandwiches uh, for that celebration Sunday. Um, you can also sign up if you're watching online with us this morning uh, by signing in the comments and they'll put you on the list, okay? Candy Harper's phone number is 812-483-5151. All right, just a reminder, another local mission that, um, that we're involved in, uh, if you took one of the 11 names to buy gifts for Christmas, those gifts should be returned to the church on Sunday, December 6th. If you have any questions, Lisa Zizzo is the contact for that project. Um, we are helping out once again at the next Farmers to Families food distribution this Wednesday, November 18th. And that is at the Warwick County 4-H Center. Volunteers should arrive no later than 3 p.m. If you're interested in volunteering, please contact Terry Vogt at 812-455-0850. And if you need any of those contact numbers, just let me know in the comments and I will message those to you. All right, it's a beautiful day the Lord has made. Uh, and we're here to celebrate that. It's a blustery day, but it is definitely a beautiful day that he's created. Thanks for being with us this morning. Hey guys, good morning. So good to be with you today. This is a little bit different for me, uh, but I'm excited about what uh, today and this morning holds. I was uh, trying to say, you know, ask the Lord, like, man, God, what do you want to, what do you want to say this morning? Is it the same thing that you have me prayer this week? Is it something different? And I always try to, you know, because I always try to stay open and say, what's the Lord want to do? And uh, the Lord was good to give me a fresh new message just this morning. So uh, we're going to walk through that together. We'll see where God takes that. But uh, I want to uh, just speak on the the, uh, the subject of faith today. And um, we're in a season, right, where, you know, our faith is the kind of the one thing we feel like we have that is unchanging in the midst of so much that changes around us. And I, let me tell you, and I'll, I'll confess to you, I'm not a person that often likes uh, my life to be changing at the, uh, you know, the drop of a hat. But sometimes that's life. It changes and you don't ask. And, uh, and you have to take a step forward. And you have to do that with faith. And so we're going to take a look at that in a little bit today. I think that uh, Abram's story in the book of Genesis uh, chapter 12 and chapter 13 is a great story for that. At least that's where, that's one of the stories where... Uh, I think the Lord directed me this morning. But before we get into that, I want to take a moment to, uh, to pray. And I thought one of the ways that we could do that um, was to go to the Lord's Prayer in the book of Matthew. You know, it's, uh, the disciples were kind of wondering, oh, man, teach us how do we pray? And, and the Lord said, when you pray, you know, in Matthew chapter 6, we, we know that as part of the Sermon on the Mount discourse there. And uh, the Lord says, well, here, when you pray... Don't be like all the fancy people that want to be heard by all their words. God doesn't need all that. God wants your heart. God wants you to speak to Him and address Him as your holy God. And He says, here's how you ought to pray. Our Father in heaven, may your holy name be honored. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need. Forgive us the wrongs we have done as we forgive the wrongs that others have done to us. Mm. Do not bring us to hard testing, but keep us safe from the evil one. Join me in prayer this morning, would you? Father, I thank you for this wonderful prayer that your son has given to your church that we can pray this prayer and that though they are words that we can all say together at the same time that the meaning and the richness of them are very valuable and that you hear us as we pray that you are working through our prayer requests and God we know sometimes it doesn't seem to happen as fast as we would like but you're at work as you told us that you make all things beautiful in your time. So 
Today, as we recite the Lord's Prayer from Scripture, would you honor your word? May it not uh, return void, but may it go out, even in the prayer, to fulfill the purpose for which you have given it, that you will be blessed, that you would bless us as we serve you faithfully to the end, and that in the end, you will redeem and bring home your church for your glory and honor and for our eternal good. And man, that sounds good, God. So in the meantime, please help us where we have troubles, where we have needs, where we struggle, where we suffer, where we need to persevere. Please lift us up and guide us onward. And I ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So good. So good. Hey, well, uh, yeah, thank the ch uh, church. Uh, nice little cup here that I've, uh, I got um, this last year. So I thought I want to break that out and use that this morning. Well, if you're, um, if you're alive and kicking, which I'm guessing you are because you're watching this morning, then uh, you know that, the, of course, as we said, the background's different. You know, it's, uh, it's not, not our church building, which is, which is totally fine. You know, uh, life changes, like I said. In, in times of great change, we have something that doesn't change. And that is not just God, but this faith that we have. And when I say it doesn't change, it doesn't go away and, uh, and, and stop working and then just come back mysteriously. We have our faith with us every day. And that should mean something. And I hope that it does, because in our faith we ultimately find our hope. And it's to that end that I, I want to uh, share this morning from uh, Genesis chapter 12. And so I'm going to... Uh, give you a moment if you're at home or uh, somewhere. You want if you've got a Bible with you, you want to open that open that Bible up, uh, or maybe on your phone or however you want to do that. But go to the book of Genesis, chapter 12. And so Genesis being the first book of the Bible, and we're going to go to the story of Abram. And this is a great story to talk about faith. And there's a couple particular parts of it that I want to uh, kind of direct our eyes to today, and, and that is uh, beginning in. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, we find that Abram is, uh, well, he has. He's gone from what he knew was his homeland up to a land called Haran. And, and Haran was uh, up in sort of Mesopotamia and um, kind of an area where we would sort of think as uh, sort of part of Turkey. And so he's, he's up there. And, uh, and God calls him to leave that land and go down to the land of Canaan. And uh, if you know a little thing about uh, geography, that is, uh, I think it's about a 700-mile journey or so. Can you imagine walking 700 miles or so? <laughs> because God said, I want you to leave where you are, and I want you to go. And I'll just give you all the rest of the details when you get there. But I want you to go. And that's exactly what uh, Abram ends up doing. And so let me read to us from uh, Genesis chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. Actually, I've got it pulled up on my computer, so let me read it from there, okay? So here's what it says. The Lord said to Abram, Leave your land, your family, his extended family, and your father's household for the land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation and will bless you. I will make your name respected and you will be a blessing. It says, I will bless those who bless you, those who curse you, I will curse. All the families of the earth will be blessed because of you. So Abram left just as the Lord told him, and Lot went with him. Now like this, now Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. And it's, then it goes tell on of his family, so taking that journey and sort of who's with him and when he gets there and the building of an altar and it's just it's it's pretty cool but can you imagine being 75 years old and and the lord says i want you to to get up from where you are and i want you to go travel and it had to be a hard season of traveling but he doesn't why because there's something about abraham that believes that yahweh has the right to instruct him how to live his life, where to go, when to go, and that when God says now, then by faith, Abram wants to be obedient. And we don't have much backstory on him and, and as to how he 
began to believe in in Yahweh as you know as God, but he did, and so man, we're thankful that he did because our story comes out of him. Uh, but I like this when I think of Abraham. Let me break this word faith down into um, an acronym, right? So I'm going to use the fur of faith. So each letter, I'm going to give you a word that I think helps us to see our faith using this story, and then ultimately, uh, if you know me. Then we're going to go to Jesus, and we're going to see if we can connect it right to Jesus and, uh, and try to lock it in. And I think we can. So here we go. Let's think about the F. And if you're jotting these down, that's awesome. Hey, I think flexible is a great word to use when thinking about faith. You know, there, there's Abram, and he's got his family, and um, he, he, has, he has to leave what he knows. He's already left what he knows, and he's going with, you know, he's gone with his family up to Iran, and then he's got to leave what he knows and travel from Haran south down into Canaan, and he ends up in, in a land um, that's not like the homeland that he had left. And so the flexibility to go to a place that the Lord says to go, and you've got to be flexible to adjust on the way and when you get there. But then either when you get there, you've got to keep going. And he ends up, because of a famine, he has to go down to Egypt. And then from Egypt, after a little bit, he's going to come back to Canaan and settle. And the story is going to continue. But you know what? I feel it's nothing. <laughs> just amazing how God wants Abram to go from one place to the next. And he's bringing his whole family with him. And so that's not just like, you know, you and two kids get in a car and you travel. This is a, a caravan of people and supplies and, and stuff that you've got to pick up, pack up, and you've got to go take a journey. And he's, he's, he's willing to be flexible to go where that's going to take him to, even though he doesn't know exactly how it's all going to play out. And I thought this morning, God, that feels exactly like where I know I'm at. You know, being flexible to just preach and teach wherever I am to people that want to listen and not know how it's all going to play out. I said, Lord, let's just try to be flexible. What's that look like for you to be flexible when God says, I want you to do this for me? And yet you just don't know, right, how it's going to play out. But you're willing to be flexible because you believe that God has the right as Lord to say, go now, here, this way. And you go, yes, Lord. Whew, I'll be flexible. Let's just try this. Let's see where it goes, you know? And I love that about Abram. I think I hope, and I hope for us that that encourages us when we think about what faith is. Well, let me give you the A in this one. So I think, for when I think of Abram, that word um, attentive, you know, to be attentive. Hmm, faith, attentive. When I, when I look at uh, the story of Abram, what's kind of neat as the story goes on is that, you know, um, God chose Abram to help teach not just his family, but the generations that would come after him about who God is and what God's like. Because they didn't know, really know, um, widespread, if you will, this, this God who is to become the God of the Jews, the God of creation, right? Um, and so here, Abram probably doesn't even realize it, but the sense of being attentive, that what God wants the people to know about him and through him, he's somewhat responsible for being that that conduit, that, that vessel, right? So that mouthpiece, that one that helps the people learn that God's going to communicate through him. And for me, I see it when, you know, the, when, uh, when God says to Abram, he says, look, he says, I'm going to bless you so that you can be a blessing to the nations. Well, I'm going to bless you and you through you experiencing and knowing me and, and learning about me and following the life that I'm going to lay out before you so that when you do that, you're going to communicate that life with me that is a blessing to the nation so that the world will know me and that the world will be drawn to me. Faith is, is be flexible, but man, it's about being attentive. I had that tested me this morning as I'm praying. I, I tell, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm, I hadn't even put my feet on the floor this morning and I'm trying and, I, and I'm praying and I'm going, and my eyes are not even open yet, right? And I'm going, God, what is it you want me to speak today? Like I said, right? Is it what you already put together this week with me and we work together? Or is it something fresh and new? Since this is just a different moment. And I'm sitting there and I'm listening. 
and I'm getting nothing, <laughs> you know. And so I'm getting ready, and I'm eating my breakfast, and I've got my coffee, and and I'm and I'm and I'm praying again, God, <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting, and and all of a sudden, as I began to just sort of think on the scriptures, this message began to just percolate within me, and and I'm just so thankful that. Um, that the Spirit helped me to have a listening ear to speak about faith and being attentive to say what God wants you to say and to do what God wants you to do. Man, are you being attentive today to the things that God is saying to you and the things that He wants for your life, the direction He's leading you? Are you being attentive to that still, small voice, that, that voice that speaks through the Scriptures, you know, when you take a little time, or maybe it's on your phone, you know, you're reading, or it's on your computer, and, you know, your laptop, your tablet, um, and just say, Lord, help me hear what you want to say to me. Because I know what you want to say is for my good. And so help me to listen, Lord. Uh, and help me to listen through others, too. If somebody has a wise word to speak to me, help me to listen to that with humility. Well, don't, uh, well, let me just say, here, here's another one. I'm going to stick with this little passage I started with. Uh, and it's this. I think that for maybe the I and faith could be interpersonal, right? Interpersonal. That, uh, you know, faith is really not just me and God. I mean, it is, right? I mean, we, you get that? Like, it's, it's, it's me and God, this relationship I have with Him. But faith without other people is kind of a short-sighted faith. For God so loved the world that He gave us one and only Son, Faith is something that we share together. Faith is something that when it's shared together, that we grow together. And if you've been with us for you know the last couple months, and no doubt that's something you've heard me talk about on Sunday mornings, that through our faith experience together, we're actually stronger and we're better together. So there's something about this that I think if it goes all the way back, I mean, I think I was to... Um, to Adam and Eve in the garden, right? And so it's not good for man to be alone, that I'll make him a helpmate. And together they serve in the environment that God created them to be in. I think there's relationship, it's interpersonal uh, aspect there. But even in Abraham too, it's like, I'm going to bless you and your family to be a blessing to the nations. So it's this idea that when you go, that you're going to go with other people and together you're going to help the world know who I am. So it's not just you. You need the other people of God around you, right? You need their prayers for you. You need them to uh, pick up the load sometimes when it's maybe a little bit of a weak season and you're struggling, you're, uh, you just feel really run down, and you're going, man, I, don't, I just don't know that I can really get through this season. I've just had enough of this nonsense, you know? It's like no matter what I do, I can't seem to get ahead. I'm always just like hitting a wall, you know? Well, the good thing about those walls is that God's a wall breaker, and he can break down those walls. He just doesn't always do them uh, when we want them, when we want him to do it. But I find that you know, some of the um, sometimes those walls need to come down with other people walking alongside us. We feel like we got to do it on our own, but really we don't. And it wasn't about Abraham doing it all by himself. It was about Abraham and his people that believed in him and would follow him. Would then together be a blessing and help the people generation after generation to be a blessing. I love that. There's so much about faith. I think we talk about it being interpersonal, right? It's the body of Christ, you know, if nothing else in the New Testament. Uh, I think it's right there. So you've got to be flexible, no doubt. I think you do have to be attentive. God, I'm listening. And you got to be willing to do life of, a life of faith with other people. So I think it is interpersonal. Well, let me give you a T. And to give you that T, we got to keep going on Abraham's journey. So, Abraham, um, this, <laughs> there's a famine. And so, he goes down to Egypt. Well, uh, I want to take you to uh, verse 11 in chapter 12. So, if you've, if you've got your Bible with you or your phone or however you've got that, you, um, you got to see verse 11. This, I, I, I looked at this this morning and, man, I laughed. Oh, this is so funny. Uh, so, uh, if you look at verse 10, right? So he's like, Abram went down to Egypt to live as an immigrant since the famine was so severe in the land. And just before he arrived in Egypt, he said to his wife, Sarah, and I like, I just, it's so funny. He says, I know you are a good looking woman. Mm, 
course, I threw the mm at the end. He doesn't really say it like that. I don't think he did. Maybe he did, right? But anyways, and uh, he says, when the Egyptians see you, they will say, oh, this is his wife, man. They'll kill me, and they'll let you live. So, you know, hey, tell them you're my sister so that um, they'll treat me well for your sake, and I will survive because of you, right? It's like, man, how crazy. I mean, think of where he's coming to. He's coming into a land where um, the, the Egyptians worship multiple gods. Of course, he's come through into Canaan, right? In Canaan, the Canaanite people worshipped uh, a plurality. So they were worshiping multiple gods, and that was really the, uh, the culture of the ancient Near East, And so, which is one of the reasons why uh, worshiping Yahweh alone was such a uh, radical faith. Uh, because it was not the custom of the day. Uh, but everywhere he goes, he finds there's this sense that, I mean, he's being tested, right? So not just with Sarah, his wife, and, and you know their family, but uh, spiritually he's being tested in these lands where he's going to. And, and again, not knowing, like, I'm, I'm walking into this, and I don't know how this is going to play out, right? So I'm afraid that I'll, I'll die, they'll take you, and this, but God's made this promise, and so how will that be fulfilled? Can, do you ever like to... Uh, hypothetically start connecting dots that are ahead of you, right? You so like, you ever run ahead of yourself? I, I do that sometimes. You know, I'm going, well, God, what if this? And then, well, if that happens, then well, what about this? And then, well, how are we going to be able to do that? And I think that's what you were wanting. And so I'm going, and I'm like, you're like, oh my gosh, it's exhausting. It's just exhausting. And, and time after time, um, I, I see Abram finding himself in that kind of place. He's just exhausted. Because he just keeps getting tested in one way or another uh, with different situations that he's finding, finding himself in over a season of time. Is he going to judge the surface of the moment or is he going to trust God's promise? Mm. That's faith, isn't it? Am I going to trust what my eyes see which may not be the entire truth, and usually it's not. Or am I going to say, God, help me to be flexible and trust that what you have promised can and will come to pass in the end? That's faith. Trusting in what you hope for and being certain of what you can't see, right? In the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, the definition of faith for us that we all so often use in the church, right? So it's time-tested. Well, man, you ready for the H? Here we are. Hopeful. I love it. Faith has got to be hopeful, you know? I, I, I love this. I, can you imagine? Think for a second. So, so you're Abram. You and I, so we're Abram. And um, or we're in his household, maybe. And, and he's told us, that, look, this is what we're going to do, and, and this is where we're going, and this is why we're going. Because God has told us this is what we're supposed to do, and so let's go. And you have this promise that's sitting out there, and you never really know exactly when it's going to play out or how it's going to play out, but you just, but right, you're just knowing that, well, Abram said we got to go, so today we go. Well, you wake up the next day and you go, okay, well, Abram said we're going, so we're going. And you have that sense of every day. You take a step on that journey, and you're hopeful that what God said, God can fulfill. The next day, it's the same deal. You know, I'm hoping, God, that what you said is going to actually come to pass. And I don't fully understand it, but I'm just, I'm holding on to today, and I'm hopeful. I'm trying to be flexible. I'm trying to be attentive, Lord, to what you're telling me. I'm, I'm trying to do this journey with these other people that are around me, going in the same direction. And uh, I know it's not happening all at once. And, and man, I'm just being tested one day after another. But I'm, I'm holding on to this hope that what you promised will come to pass. I love that picture of faith. I think that's Abraham's picture. I think that's a lot of people's picture of faith throughout the Old and the New Testament. Uh, question I want to ask you is today, when you think about your faith, is that, a, is that a description of your faith? Flexible, attentive, it's interpersonal, it's time-tested, and it's hopeful. Well, if you want to learn from somebody other than just Abram, as we always like to do at New Hope, we want to go to Jesus. 
And so let's just quickly go to Jesus. I don't have a big cross that I could, you know, walk to or kind of reference as I typically do when we're on site, but that's okay. Let's think about what we know about Jesus. You know, Jesus was flexible. He wasn't going to save humanity from heaven, so he comes to earth. And not just flexible to come to earth and, and to, be, to be born as a Christ child, but to be flexible to go where the Father is leading. You know, and where opportunities to minister to folks uh, throughout Galilee, and uh, he would go. And uh, to, to go uh, to the cross, flexible to go. But he was also attentive. You know, there's times when Jesus is uh, teaching, and he says, look, you know, it's like, I, I'm not just telling you the things that, that I'm just telling you. Like, I'm passing on to you the things that the Father has told me. The things that the Father wants me to do, what he wants me to say so that you might know about him and, and what it's really like to live in a covenant with him, I'm passing it along. He's given it to me. I'm giving it to you. And, and, of course, you know the Holy Spirit. So let's not leave the Holy Spirit out. Let's get the trifecta here, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is guiding us into all truth. And so we're to listen to the Holy Spirit, guide us in the truth of living that life of faith every single day. Well, let me jump back to Jesus, you know. Uh, so flexible, going, attentive, listening, passing it along. And, and I love interpersonal. You know, so much and... Well, really, so well, so much, you know, Jesus' ministry was doing what? Was being with the disciples, you know, for three years, uh, going to the synagogue to worship, uh, going to the temple, right, at times when it was, when it was necessary to go, it was right to go, and uh, going where the people were and talking to them, healing them, spending time eating dinner with them, you know, just relaxing with them, laughing with them, no doubt. And, and mourning with them, you know, when, when life was hard and people were broken and, uh, and teaching them about God, helping them to grow in understanding what it is to be a people of faith. So much was Jesus with people. He lived out his faith with people. That's interpersonal. That's Jesus. And it was time-tested. I mean, 33 years, right? It just living that life of faith and growing, right, in, uh, in stature and in favor with, uh, with God and men, as it tells us in the beginning of Luke. But maybe there's no better picture of time-tested faith than the week of the Passion. So Jesus at the cross, the crucifixion, time-tested, dying on Friday, and Raising from the dead on Sunday. Talk about time, three days, time-tested faith. Knowing, believing with an assurance that he would die, but he would be raised from the dead. That death would not conquer. That life would have the final say. That victory will win out. And that the enemy will be conquered. And that all who would believe in him would, yes, one day die, but have the promise of eternal life. Eternal resurrection. Time-tested. Jesus knows about a faith that's time-tested. But you know what? He also knows about a faith that's hopeful. Because Jesus was always looking to the end. He was living in the moment, right? Because faith is living in this moment with God. But he always was aware that he was coming back again one day. On that last day, he will return and he'll gather his church with him and, and take them to the eternal uh, place in heaven. I mean, Jesus knows that this day is coming. Well, only the Father knows the day, but he knows that he is the one that will lead that gathering of the bride of Christ together for the eternal uh, marriage feast with the Lamb, right? As Scripture talks about it. That that day's coming, and he knew it. And so even though he would look at the pain and the suffering, he would look at the rejection, people denying him, people ignoring him, people saying, oh, it's too hard, forget that craziness, I don't want nothing to do with that, people trying to shut him up and shut him down. And he said, yeah, but I'm looking beyond today. I'm looking to tomorrow. I'm looking to what the Father and I will do at the end. But you see, he knew the end when he knew your beginning. That's the power of faith. 
Jesus, above all, teaches us a life of faith. So my question for us is, as we sit in today, and there's a lot of stuff around us, isn't it? You know what I mean? Like the, the unknowns, and uh, it's real it's challenging, and, um, and so much keeps changing. But I want to tell you today, number one, God loves you. And number two, that faith that you have in Him, it's not always easy. But if you'll be flexible and you'll work hard or try hard, I should say try, now try hard to be attentive through the Word, through prayer, through listening to other wise saints in the church. If you'll gather around others and, and not take the journey alone, if you'll just take the time-tested moments, moment by moment, and remember, if you're still breathing, it's not the end, so you're still going to keep going, and you'll get through it. And if you'll hold on to hope, the Lord has said that all who hold on to hope in Him with faith, that in the end, they shall receive their reward. So by your hopeful faith, you will receive that eternal blessed inheritance with Jesus Christ. And so today, wherever you're at and whatever you're going through, I want to encourage you to hold on to that. Hold on to that faith that like Abram, like Jesus, and, and so many others, and, and, and probably at times you can think even your own life, uh, probably just like your story. But a faith that's flexible, that's attentive, it's interpersonal, it's time-tested, <laughs> and it's hopeful. I promise the Lord is right when He says that He will bless you, that your faith will be a blessing to others. Hold on. The Lord's not done with you yet. Let's just keep on going and see what happens for the good of His kingdom and the good of our community. Who knows what will happen? Amen. Hey, will you join me in a word of prayer this morning? Thanks. God, I thank you this morning for this message. I, I thank you that uh, you got me through it today. But I thank you for those that are, are listening and we're worshiping together. We're in separate places, but we're one body in Jesus Christ. Thank you for that family. And I ask that you would take this message and you would lift us up. You would encourage us all, no matter where we are, that you will strengthen us. Strengthen the resolve of our faith through the Spirit of God that is within us. Help us to live today and the days ahead with patience, being flexible, willing to listen to you, willing to say, I need other people in my life to grow in my faith, not run from the struggles, but let our faith grow and be tested and, and mature through them, and our hope in you be renewed. For we know that you are God of your word and that you will carry us through to the end. Thank you for being a God who is faithful and true and for hearing us as we pray and we worship today. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Lord. May the Lord bless you today. Hey, if you need anything, reach out to us. Give us a call. Send me an email. Send me a text message if you've got our phone. You can reach us through our website, uh, through our Facebook page, uh, however you need to. Uh, don't hesitate. We're here for you. We love you. Lord bless you guys. Thanks for tuning in today, and we'll see you soon. Thanks.